Mike Gibson coming to you live from Sky 2017. I'm joined by Shami Mahmood. We're talking about robotic PCI. Of course, robotics have penetrated uh, surgery, but you know, we and I have talked before about robotic PCI. It's such a fascinating area. You've kind of now expanded to a multi-center experience and comparing radial versus femoral. Tell us about what you're presenting here at the meeting. Sure. So, Mike, as, as we've discussed in the past, the feasibility and safety of doing robotic PCI has been demonstrated in previous studies, but generally smaller studies and single-center studies and fairly straightforward hand-picked, cherry-picked lesions. So the Precision Multi-Center Registry is a 16-site uh, multiple operator uh, national U U.S. registry enrolled patients over three and a half years. So it's a total of 754 patients and so uh, I was able to report outcomes overall in the group and we also wanted to look at whether or not uh, people are brave enough to try it radially because early on uh, everyone thought well you'd really need femoral access to make sure you have adequate guide catheter support with this system. Interesting. Yeah. And so it turns out uh, that 60 percent of the PCIs were done radially in this uh, in the precision registry and when we looked at the baseline characteristics both clinical and, and angiographic the two groups were not well matched at all so in general the radial patients they had less comorbidities and angiographically they had less lesion complexity and so when we looked at the outcomes both clinical and technical success they were better in the radial uh, group as opposed to the femoral group um, and then we did a propensity matched analysis and that demonstrated that most of the difference disappeared, um, though there was still a slight edge for the radio group. And I think that that portion has to be taken with a big grain of salt because the baseline characteristics, there's only so much you can do with propensity matching. Sure. Uh, but the positive would be that overall the clinical success rates were 97%. Wow. Uh, and the technical success rates were about uh, 86% for the overall wow. cohort. Um, no How major. did you cross over to just a traditional method? Good. That's a great question. And that was the definition of technical success. I see. It was the patients that you had to go to a manual, a manual approach for uh, procedure completion. And that were ranged in the 11 to 12 percent range. And uh, it was similar in the radial and femoral approaches as far as the conversion to the manual. Right. And what part of it is the robotic part? I mean, you get access the traditional way, you get the guide up the traditional way, and then it's just wiring the vessel and advancing the stent, or what part is robotic? So, so exactly as you described. So this is the Core Path 200, which is a first generation robotic system. So you have to manually uh, get access and put the guide catheter in the relevant coronary, and then you're able to control the guide wire, balloon, and stent. Mm -hmm. There is the new Corpat second generation, it's called the GRX, that just got FDA approval a few months ago, and that now has guide catheter control as well. Oh, okay. So the data from the precision registry, however, uh, really is data from the older first generation system. Yeah. And now we'll see if the newer generation decreases the number of manual assistance cases. Cool. And the advantage is uh, for the patient would be what? So I think w no study has shown a patient level benefit. There is, importantly, no patient level harm. Mm -hmm. So no issues with procedural success, adverse events for the patients. The contrast, radiation exposure to the patient, and procedure times are all comparable mm -hmm. between the two approaches. The benefit predominantly is for the operator with the previous studies showing 95 to 97 percent radiation reduction mm -hmm. because you do the procedure away from table side and you're not uh, you're not in the environment to get but are you wearing lead you're not wearing lead either because I mean if it makes your operator healthier uh, ultimately that might provide better patient care provide greater longevity for operators you would expect it to provide uh, longevity for the operators for sure and potentially they're more rested and and, right. and uh, uh, they might have better judgment or might have even uh, improved outcomes but that's never that's been never shown been in Fascinating stuff. So, wow. Great. Cool. Thank you for having thanks, me. Thanks, I mean, thanks for joining us and thanks to all of you for joining us here live from Sky 2017.